Good morning, everyone. Hope all of you are doing well. And it seems you have enjoyed this teardown series on the Twin Cam and M8. Of course, this is part of that original series I've been doing now for a month or so on a Twin Cam versus M8. Of course, both of those uh, both of those builds will be part of the series as well. We're going to detail each component uh, there as we go along. So today, this is just a real quick short video. I'd like to give you guys a couple of channel announcements and let you know what's going on. And also, we can't uh, we we can't do a video without doing something tech related. So I've got a couple of questions, uh, very common questions that I saw uh, come through on those videos. So I want to answer those. The first announcement is we had so many questions and so many comments come in on those two videos. Uh, it's I do read all of your comments, guys. I read every single one. And a lot of times what I'll do is wait and see the questions uh, because those questions seem to be uh, there are very common questions that come in over and over and over again. And it takes a tremendous amount of time to, to answer all of them, as, as, as you can imagine. But regardless, I want to get those questions answered. So sometimes I'll wait and, and let the video sit for a little while and then answer those questions in a video. But there were a lot of very good questions that came through. So what we're going to do tomorrow on Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to go live. And we're going to do a live question and answer session. I'm going to run it for one hour from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday. So be sure, if you can, hop in and join us for the live session there. Also, we are in the process of building our new website. If uh, we've still got a bunch of parts to put into it and all that type of stuff, but uh, we had so many people asking, you know, what is the Skunk Works engine program and, and uh, just a lot of information. So uh, we've started building our new website. You'll find it at baxtersgarage.com. Uh, there aren't, there's a handful of parts in there, but you'll, over the next few weeks, we're going to be loading more and more of our parts, more and more of our engine kits, our, you know, our spec kits that people can do. Uh, and so, well, Keep an, keep an eye out for that. That's going to be something that's that's definitely building. So I do want to answer a couple of questions while we're here. I just uh, can't make a video without some tech stuff. One common question that I got was, why do I break bolts loose by hand instead of just putting an impact on them? So there are years of experience, to be quite honest. A lot of the bolts that are, that are used in these engines and transmissions and things, these are grade 5 and grade 8 bolts, depending on the year model. Now those bolts, the protrusion of that bolt, it varies, the length of the bolt. And of course, a lot of these bolts are quarter 20 fasteners, which are relatively small, and they're going into aluminum that also has Loctite on it. So one of the reasons that I do it the way that I do it is I want to feel the bolt. I don't want to just put an impact on it and zip it out because you can run the risk of pulling threads out, weakening the threads that are in the base aluminum material, and also run the risk of actually breaking the bolt head. So I want to feel it when it comes out. If uh, for some reason it binds as I break it loose, then I know there could potentially be a problem there that I can avoid by feeling it by hand instead of just zipping it out of there with an impact. The other reason I do that is let's say I, I have a cover, a, a rocker box or a primary, primary cover, and I see a leak that's in that area. If I back the bolt loose by hand and the bolt is loose, I know more than likely that leak is there because the bolt was loose. But if I back that off and the bolt is tight, yet it was still leaking, that can be a clue to me that we have a cover with an issue. You know, we could have a warped cover or, or it could, you know, have a, a problem in the mating surface or something like that. So it's uh, there's a lot that goes through my mind, a lot of processes that go through my brain uh, when we disassemble uh, as much as assembly. Again, it's a purpose of these videos, a lot of clues uh, along the way if you pay attention uh, and a skilled technician would, would do that sort of thing. So that's why I break them loose by hand. The next is clues to know how you could be something. You saw on the twin cam, of course, we split the case. It had a ton of oil in the bottom of it. So what are some of the clues? Grab a pen and paper. The first thing is loss of power. That's intermittent. Let's say you fire the bike up when it's cold and you start riding. The bike rides great. The hotter it gets, you start to feel like you dropped an anchor. Or maybe you're riding for a long time, bike seems to run well, you stop at a red light, you start to accelerate from the red light, and it just feels like it doesn't have the power that it should. That's one key uh, element in, in something. 
Uh, the next is erratic oil pressure. You know, you see, you know, oil pressure that's unstable, drops up and down. Uh, that can be a good indication. Another is if you check your oil before you start a ride, check the oil after you start a ride. Or, excuse me, when you, when you finish your ride. And if you notice a big change in those oil levels going up and down, then you know that oil has to be going somewhere. More than likely, it's in the bottom of the case if you observe that condition. Another is excessive engine heat. Um, typically, if an engine is something, it will build up a tremendous amount of heat that you seem to be able to feel more in the primary or on the cam cover. So that's uh, another good indication would be excessive engine heat. But probably one of the big telltale signs is if for no unexpected reason you start to see a big loss in fuel economy. All right, it's, it's remember that oil is bathing that crank and when it does, it puts a, a tremendous amount of additional load on the engine, uh, particularly on fuel injected bikes. As you increase the load on the engine, the fuel delivery is increased as well. So you would see, you know, if, if you know, normally you're seeing that 40 miles to a gallon, give or take, and with no modifications to the bike, suddenly you start getting 32, 33, 34 miles to a gallon, something like that, then that's a very good indication that you are something as well. Uh, now, on uh, on your you know twin cam models and such, there is a small plug that's on the bottom of the crankcase. You, it's it can be dangerous to remove that plug. That plug is not intended to be taken out. It's actually in there with red Loctite. So you have to be very very careful to take that plug out because it can crack the case. I've seen that happen or pull the threads out. And when that happens, that's a a very expensive repair to make. Now, the reason I mentioned that plug is one test that you can do is, is go, for, go for a ride, come back, let the bike idle for a couple of minutes. You shut it off, and with the bike standing straight up, you pull that plug out and then measure the amount of oil that comes out. Again, somewhere, you know, two ounces. It, ideally, you would have virtually none, but that doesn't happen. So, uh, you know, two ounces to four ounces, give or take. But once it gets more than about four five ounces, it starts to become a problem. So one way you can check that, of course, after after a long ride and letting the bike idle uh, for a few minutes and then check it, and then also go for a long ride, come back, don't let it idle for an extended period of time, immediately shut the bike off, check it again, and then just kind of compare the two. So uh, that's that's another way that, that the final way that you know you can check it. But if you have all the other conditions that I mentioned before, then you almost don't need to pull the plug. You'll know. All right. So I hope that I will see you tomorrow, Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and bring your questions. Write everything down. Uh, I'm open to pretty much any topic, motorcycle or car related, and maybe beverages. I like beverages too. You guys have a great Friday night. We'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.